Now this video probably doesn't apply to everybody, but even the people it doesn't apply to might find the carbon offsetting part of the video quite interesting. And you probably might know that I've been in electric cars for a very long time. The thing that got me into EVs was I'm quite environmentally conscious. Now not all electric car owners are environmentally conscious. Some people just buy it for saving money. Some people buy it to save money and then have little entire environmental interest. It's a bit like having a vegan and a vegetarian and a meat eater. You know, just because someone drives an EV doesn't necessarily mean they don't also eat meat. So yeah, it, just think of it that way. So this is what this video is about and we're gonna be talking about carbon offsetting. And the reason why I'm talking about this is as you're watching this video, I'm on holiday and you might say, Nick, you probably should have had a staycation, it's better for the environment. But let's be honest, poor service in the UK, overpriced holidays in the UK because of the economy at the moment. It's cheaper to fly abroad, better quality thing. So the next question is, you're going to ask, why didn't I drive? Well, we'll get into this. Now, firstly, I don't travel a lot. And I don't travel a lot, not just for personal, but also for business. I very rarely travel especially abroad and if I do travel abroad for business and it's in Europe I drive there always in an electric car using the Eurotunnel I always drive an electric car and use the Eurotunnel when going for business trips in Europe I don't tend to travel to, to anywhere outside of Europe ever and if I do it's usually on a holiday or if it was for a work trip which I've not done any yet I would combine it with a family holiday to try and sort of maximise that time off because I have a two-year-old and this is why I am not driving to my European holiday this year because a two-year-old and a car journey for six and a half, seven hours to the Eurotunnel plus another seven and eight hours to the destination and then back again is not my idea of a holiday. That's my idea of hell. And currently there is no electric planes that are commercially viable for flying me on holiday. There is some, some small, you know, two-seater, three-seater planes at the moment that could fly me there, but I'm not rich enough to hire a plane. And so it, it weirdly, the only alternative I've got is to fly with an airline to a package holiday system. If I could get an electric plane and it was slightly more expensive, for that electric plane trip, I would pay slightly extra to travel on an electric plane rather than a fossil fuel plane. But that's because I have environmental issues. So the next thing is, what about carbon offsetting? Now this is what this main video is about, is you can offset your carbon. Now, if you don't know what carbon offsetting is, carbon offsetting is you have a look at the flight, it'll give you a carbon calculation for you and your family and how much carbon that plane will produce. And then you can buy something that will offset the carbon. Now, this can be a couple of things. It might be building a solar farm in Africa or a solar farm in an African village. It might be planting some trees. It might be another sort of wind turbine project, you know, for, for again, for a poorer nation. So it's like a feel good factor that you're helping a poorer nation and you're offsetting some carbon by giving them some solar panels rather than them, you know, burning some fossil fuels. The thing is though, if you're building a solar farm in an African village, it's likely because they haven't got electricity and you're providing electricity, so you've not offset any carbon. In fact, I actually think carbon offsetting is a bit like burning down a forest and then planting a few trees because eventually those trees will soak up the carbon of what you've just burnt. It, to be honest, a lot of the carbon offsetting, and a lot of it, and I mean, I've done quite a lot of research on various companies, the majority of it seems to be run by almost scams. Um, scam companies, this, some of these ca carbon offsetting facilities are buying carbon offset, they're already going to build these projects anyway um, without your money. So it didn't really need the carbon offsetting, you didn't need to pay for it because they were already kind of being invested by other investors. So you're just taking rich people's money that would have paid for it anyway. Uh, by using your feel good I'm carbon offsetting factor. You, there's other various things that you could do for carbon offsetting which we're going to get to in this video that shall have a more meaningful effect. If you do want to though invest in a solar wind farm in Africa because of that feel good factor, don't do it because you're offsetting the carbon for your plane. Do it because you think that makes you feel good and you think that will help the lives of less advantaged people 
abroad. So what am I going to do to make my carbon that I'm going to be burning on this plane and going on holiday and enjoying myself, what am I going to do to get rid of that slightly bad factor of flying and burning fossil fuels and carbon? Well, for a lot of people, they just won't care. They'll just do it anyway. But if you do care and you want to make a meaningful change for what you've done in carbon, then save some carbon that you would have normally have burnt. Now, this is easy to do. You just make decisions that would have normally used carbon um, and make proactive choices not to do those things. So first of all, don't go on holiday by a plane if you can drive. Uh, I mean, at the moment, driving to Europe is fairly easy if you haven't got a two year old. <laughs> but if you have got children and you do need a fly, don't feel too guilty. There's some other meaningful life choices that you can make, like eat less meat, eat less imported fruit. So if you buy fruit and veg, see where it's come from. If it's something that's had to been flown in fresh on a plane for you to eat, that's not very carbon carbon safe, especially because of all the cold sort of storage they've had to use on the plane and the fuel of the plane, just so you can eat something that's grown abroad and has to be sh flown by plane rather than by ship. So constant choices you can make there. There's a couple of uh, websites that list the fruit and veg that has the worst CO2 impact. So try and eat anything that's produced locally, for obviously for the UK and Europe, that'll be anything produced in the UK and Europe. And if you are buying fruit from that's flown in, be conscious that that is the worst thing you can do for your carbon. Other things you can do is eat less meat. Uh, meat production produces, means more cattle have to be made, more cattle being, you know, herded, grown, it means more feed, more feed, more fertilizer, compounded, carbon there and obviously cows and other animals produce methane gas which is also carbon insensitive for going to the sort of atmosphere so these are various things that you can do to cut down your personal carbon level i for for instance i'm going to be doing a combination of eating uh, less imported fruits I, I i've never been conscious about what i've been eating before i'm going to be more conscious about that uh, eating less meat is one thing I keep promising myself to do over and over again. I'm not going to be a vegan. I love cheese. I love meat. But I will try and eat less meat. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not good the amount of meat most humans consume anyway. So I'm going to try and eat less meat, uh, eat less imported fruit, and I'm going to be more of a pain in the ass. Now, at the moment, I do this YouTube channel making everything about electric vehicles, promoting getting people into EVs. That's probably got some carbon offsetting for myself. But... I'm going to do more local events if I can, try and talk to more local people, get more people into EVs and solar and battery tech. Now, if you're interested in learning about solar and battery tech, there won't be a video next week. So check out these videos here in this series playlist. And I have a really exciting partner to come up with my solar projects very soon. So keep your eyes peeled on that playlist.